This week, we got some absolutely insane new AI releases that will change the internet forever. We have Sora 2, which is a, an entire social media-like platform where you can browse videos, you can generate videos with audio. So, say we clicked into one like this one. Hit the ramp! Or this one. You know, neighbors. Building a new model is a little like raising a child. It takes patience, kindness, and lots of time. And you can actually see the prompt they put on the right. We can like it, remix it, create our own version, and we can just scroll down to go to the next video, very similar to TikTok. Sora 2 is absolutely amazing creating videos with audio, and I know VO3 is able to do that. But the fact that we have an entire social network now with all this stuff that it's creating, and the videos are very, very real, is absolutely insane. And on a normal week, that would be the biggest news of the week. However, we also got Claude Sonnet 4.5, which is also a massive release. So it is the state-of-the-art software engineering model. So we got a really, really good video model this week. We also got the top-of-the-line coding model. And you can see Sonnet 4.5, versus Opus 4.1, Sonnet 4, Codex, GPT-5, Gemini 2.5 Pro. You can see where it ranks, and this is the SWE benchmark. You can also see some other benchmarks here where Sonnet 4.5 is versus the other models. And Claude was already the best coding model out there. Now it's gotten even better. As a programmer my entire life, I can tell you that Claude Sonnet 4.5 is really good. It is my go-to, my everyday workflow. However, the only problem with it is limits on usage. So I've been using APIs because that's like the only way to get really truly unlimited. If you subscribe to their plan, you might max out pretty quickly, but the API calls aren't cheap, so it's a balance. Nonetheless, still the best coding model by a landslide. OpenAI is also taking on Google and Amazon with a new agentic shopping system. That sounds a lot cooler than it probably is. Basically, if you're in the United States, you now have the ability to order items from Etsy sellers directly through your ChatGPT chat, and soon you'll be able to do it through Shopify right within your conversation. We have Perplexity, which has finally released the Comet browser for everyone in the entire world for free, so you no longer need the subscription plan. I have an entire review on the Comet browser. The best part about it is the agentic web surfing, so you can have like this little side window and you can talk to it and say, hey, can you do this or do that? And it has the ability to go on the browser for you and do things. All right, let's get back to some big news, at least in my opinion. We have Google Home devices are now getting Gemini. So this has been a long time coming. They have some new cameras, new doorbells, new smart speakers, but the biggest news is that these are getting Gemini built in. So you will have the ability to say, hey, when were flowers delivered and it will be able to go through your video feed and find you this information. They also have the new Gemini Live that you can talk to on your existing Google Home devices. All of this is being released later this month, or at least starting to roll out later this month. So it is actually going to cost me $10 less to get all these new Gemini features. I know some people will be paying a little bit more. It just all depends on what you had existing. So if you are paying for Google Gemini Pro, this is going to be bundled all in. It actually ends up all in all being $10 less when you factor in everything from before to the new package. But if you didn't have Gemini Pro, you might be spending like $10 more than you used to. So that's where Google's at. Google is updating Google Flow and it is adding Nano Banana. So when you generate an image, you can actually go back and edit the image now. So the best image editor model in the world is now on Google Flow, which brings up this other piece of news, which is really big and important. So if you want to create your own AI film, you can win a prize of $1 million. So you can have your submissions until November 20th, and it, the film needs to be generated by Google AI models and tools including Gemini, Flow, and others. And your film's total length has to be between 7 and 10 minutes. What are your thoughts on this? Do you like the idea of like filmmakers using AI to create films, like full films made with AI? Or are you highly against this? Or maybe you want to enter your film idea 
Let me know in the comments below. I may or may not create something to enter. I'm not sure yet. I don't have any like great film ideas off the top of my head at the moment, but that might change. So I've been programming all my life and I really love the idea of AI and coding. And the reason why I like that is so other people can experience my passion, experience what I've always enjoyed just at a lower level, at least for now until AI advances to replace me. Now, with that said, there's been some incredible big updates this week for anyone who is interested in coding. So we have Google Jewels, which now is available on your command line interface. And I've tried this out, it actually works extremely well. So you can actually just use Jewels directly from your command line. You don't have to go to the website anymore. So that one's a little bit more techy, but if we're talking about vibe coding tools, two of the biggest vibe coding tools in the entire world also got major updates this week. So we have Bolt version two, which was released this week, which they say each prompt is going to get you further, 98% less error loops that are happening. So if you vibe code, you'll know, like you ask a question, it says, hey, I fixed it. Then you're like, hey, you didn't. And then it's gonna go back and say, I have fixed it. And the loop continues. Well, they're saying 98% chance that won't happen as much or 98% less than before. You can have a thousand times bigger projects, which is amazing. And then they also have multi-agents, right on Bolt version two. They also have databases, hosting, authentication, payment, SEO, all built in automatically right now. So it can manage and do everything. So your website or your app or whatever you're making with Bolt version two can integrate payments, can integrate authentication systems, hosting databases, so on and so forth, all built in on one platform. You don't have to leave, don't have to go anywhere else. The other vibe coding tool that got a major update is Lovable. So there is now something called Lovable Cloud where you have a backend database and there's authentication right out of the box that you can just start using. They have file storage and security built in. Simply put, Lovable Cloud is a built-in backend for Lovable apps that just works. So we've had ChatGPT change the landscape of videos. We've had Google change the landscape of your home. Claude with their massive update with 4.5 for anyone interested in coding. It is a phenomenal model. We've even had Perplexity join the hunt this week for AI news with their comment browser. And I guess the question is, what is Grok doing this week? We are building Grokopedia. It will be a massive improvement over Wikipedia. Frankly, it is necessary steps towards XAI's goal of understanding the universe. So all these other companies are working on all these really amazing things. And we have Grok creating Grokopedia. I'm kind of interested to see how in Wikipedia styled website would work when it's generated by AI content that was trained from things like Wikipedia. So we're just basically doing a full circle. We also have DoorDash, which released its DOT. It's it's like little delivery robot thing. It can travel 20 miles per hour and it's in like limited beta. It's using AI. It's going to deliver your food. There's also this new device called Looky L1. So it's like this cat looking necklace thing that you put on and it's whole purpose is it's an AI wearable that sees, hears, captures your surroundings around you. So they have an entire like story mode, so it doesn't capture every second. It's just supposed to capture things that matter within your day. And then it will stitch all the videos together to make things like vlogs or like a story of your life as you go. I just thought this was an interesting one to throw in the weekly news segment. It was released this week and it's kind of cool. It's different. It's a multimodal AI physical device, which is not something we see every week. But truly this week was phenomenal with like better video creation, better coding creation, your home's changing. Everything seems to be ramping up in AI again, which is exciting. I love it all. And if you guys do too, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis or nearly daily basis. Don't forget to like the video. It tells algorithm you enjoy this type of content and leave a comment down below. What's your favorite news item of the week? What do you look forward to? One of these topics is going to affect you. Are you a coder? Have you tried Sora 2? And if you want to try Sora 2, I will have an invite code sent part of my weekly newsletter. And if you want to be a part of that, just go to franklina.com. I'll have a link in the description as well as the comment. Click it, go to it, sign up for the newsletter. I'll send out some codes this week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video.
to be.